So this one might be controversial because it's a beloved film. I need to stop starting them with might be controversial because they all are a bit. Uh, Easy Rider is a film that I love to death. But also if you said, oh, do you want to watch, should I watch Easy Rider? I'd be like, ah, I don't know. Because it requires a lot of like historical knowledge. I think if you're not aware of sort of the, the hippie movement and sort of the escapism of that era, it's just two dudes driving around on motorbikes in the beautiful wilderness and then occasionally doing some weed, which is fun. It's very fun and you could watch it as that. Doing some weed. <laughs> doing some weed. I wasn't sure they'd say doing drugs or having weed. So I just, we've, we've sailed in the middle. We've sailed in the middle, um, which is very fun, but also very different to I think how it's supposed to be understood. There's a whole sort of Mardi Gras scene at the end, which I think we would just be like, I don't understand, there's people screaming and you know, occasionally beads. It's gone black and white all of a sudden and it's unclear why. So it's simultaneously an iconic film that I'd say if you're interested in sort of America's history, it's very much worth watching. But if you just want to hang out and watch some guys have a little, have a little, you know, uh, maybe not the film to watch. But I'm not your mum. Big! Big has aged really badly um, because when you're a kid and you watch this film, when I watched it for the first time, I was a youngster, and you always just, you always want to be bigger. <laughs> you want to be an adult, you want to do what the adults can do. And this kid was there living the dream, going out, and he did what we'd all do. He, he got a job and spent all of it on video games and living the high life. And um, then throughout the film, you, you start feeling a bit of empathy for him and the fact that he, he can't go back to the life he had and he starts missing his mum. And then as a kid, I was like, well, because I'd, I'd miss my mum as well. And it was, it was quite a journey to go on as a kid. And then when he got resolved at the end, the film ended, you were a bit like, oh, great, cool. And you still like, have in the back of your mind up to a certain age that, yeah, big is that film where you're a youngster and you become an adult and you see it through that, that visor. And then when you get to a certain age and you watch it again, like say when you're 25, like myself, and you watch it again, start to realize it's a bit creepy. Um, this this kid becomes an adult, starts dating a, a, a woman of a similar age in her eyes. And then eventually, at the end of the film, kid turns back into a kid in front of the woman. So the woman then sees that she's been dating a kid. Obviously, he's mentioned that he is a kid, but she could just think he's insane, it's not real. But she actually now sees that happen. What does that do to said woman's psyche? She's, she's pretty much just you know what the word is, she's been doing that. And it's, uh, you don't really know where to go from there when you're an adult watching it. And I kind of feel bad at my parents that I had to make them watch it so many times now, because they must have been sitting there kind of pulling the hair out going, what is this film? Why are we making, why is, why is he like this film so much? But yeah, if you watch big now, like back through an adult lens, it's not good watching. We forgive you, Tom Hanks, you've done a lot of incredible stuff, but big, big's gonna take some recovering. For me, it's probably, it's hard this one, but I'm gonna say Return of the Jedi. What the hell? Because so much of, the, uh, so much of it ends in like this nice, happy, like, Yub Nub, Yub, oh, by the way, now that it's been redone, Yub Nub is gone, Yub Nub's not canon, hate that. That was probably the best <laughs> bit about the Ewoks. The Ewoks are crap, and then Yub Nub comes in and saves it. I mean, come on. Ewoks should have been Wookiees, by the way. But everything, the combination of this, we, Uncle Palps gets thrown into the, the big hallway, he explodes. Uh, Vader gets melted, you know, set on fire, he's dead because he's like been lightning and just you know, chokes because he's not got the mask on. And all our heroes are save the galaxy. Sure, I like the idea of the Aftermath trilogy, the great series of books where we explore the proper like destruction of the Empire and then the rebirth like has is about to happen in the Outer Rim. But then we come to the new trilogy which started off so strong and then got divisive and then turned into a mess. Now I kind of like the Rise of Skywalker because I just like messy styles. I like just get... Palpatine says the thing. He says the thing that I the, the dark side of the pathway to many abilities, some considered to be unnatural. Yeah, like profiting off nostalgia. Yeah, it's great. But it just the Return of the Jedi ended so well for them characters, and then you come to this trilogy, and it's like it's almost almost all for nothing, mm -hmm. and. It was, they were kind of all done dirty apart from, and I, I think Han Solo, uh, Harrison Ford, he wasn't done dirty, but he did the series dirty in a way. Like, I feel like he was almost shot off too soon. Like I would have had him like in the middle of like last year sort of thing, and maybe actually sort of shake hands with Luke in this era where we were, I don't know, just something where he had like some sort of interaction of just that one last time with the band back together, or even a flashback. But for me, 
how bad Ewoks are and the fact that they managed to defeat the Empire, it's like, uh, it's just like, hey, I've got some toys. I would have rather had Gungans. Just have, have Return of the Jedi, redo it, have it on the boo, get Gungans in there, get Boss Nass going, blah, 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 and just get going because Ewoks are crap. That's why they ruined that movie for me. But there's actually quite a lot of good in that movie. The Jabba the Hutt sequence, uh, ATSTs are really cool. And I do kind of like the throne room battle, but yeah, screw Ewoks. Ewoks are crap. Dodgeball. Dodgeball's age the worst, right? Because it came out in 2004. And you put it, like, just, like, I'm not even talking about the problematic language or anything like that. It's just, you just kind of like, roll with the punches. That's just how we talked back then. We were all garbage. There's a scene in that where Vince Vaughn's like, I can't do this anymore. I can't achieve. I can't win. I just, I'm not, I'm not cut out for this athletic sporting life. I just, I can't do it. I can't do it. And you know who appears to change his mind and talk him back into it? Disgraced drug cheat, Lance Armstrong. He just appears out of nowhere. He's like, Vince, buddy. I forget what he's actually playing in the film. He's like, you've got it. You can do it. You can achieve anything you set your mind to with your God-given talent. Look at all the medals I won from my God-given talent. And it inspires him when he goes off and he wins. And of course, Lance Armstrong didn't really achieve anything with his God-given talent. And that means this scene has aged worse than probably any other scene in cinema. Except for anything in a Tarantino film where you can see a toe. Right, I am not ashamed to admit that one of the movies that got me into movies, I know I talked about Dawn of the Dead on a previous one of these, is American Pie. Like the American <laughs> Pie OG trilogy. I used to watch those things over and over again. I might be the only person in this entire world who's listened to the director's commentary for American Pie 1. I, I was genuinely, genuinely obsessed with these things because I thought they were really funny. I thought they had relatable characters and I just thought they were like well made. There was a lot of crap you know, jockey teen sex comedies in the 2000s that this inspired. And they were all kind of garbage. A lot of them might have been fun, but a lot of them weren't well made. Whereas this, if you listen to the director's commentary, they were trying to make a proper movie. And I think that shows in, in how it was like the production values and stuff and the way it treats the characters. But going back to this thing, in 2019, as I did last year, I finally got the Blu-ray because I thought, you know, I'll upgrade these DVDs. Haven't seen it in a while, I'll give it a go. Oh. And for the most part, it was all right. There's some dated humor to be, you know, expected for, for, from a sex comedy that was made back in 2000s. But the one thing, the one thing that I just couldn't get over is the scene. You know the scene in American Pie? Seeing the webcam scene. The webcam scene in American Pie where Jason Biggs' character um, gets his love interest around his house and all of his mates have essentially convinced him to set up a webcam because she's coming over to study but she also needs to get changed. So he sets up a webcam and projects it accidentally to the entire school's email server, which includes, for some reason, Blink-182. I don't know why they're at that school, but you know, I dug that at the time, I still kind of dig that now. And that idea is just, is so creepy. Obviously, you know, Jason Biggs' character, he is, um, he is also the butt of the joke because he accidentally does a little, you know, mistake in his own underpants. And he's supposed to be at his fault as, you know, the, the, the lady. But the fact that it's just, it's so creepy, it's so pervy. And then she gets kicked out of school for it. She gets sent mm -hmm. back to, I can't remember what country she's from, but she's from a, a different country. So she gets kicked out and it's kind of like, and they get off scot-free and it's just sort of like, hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about this now. Maybe this was never good, but maybe because I was, you know, 12 or 13 when I originally watched this. I didn't think about the implications of this, but now I can't quite get over it. But the, everything around it, it's a shame that's right in the middle, but everything around it is still still quite good. This is the all, every time we do one of these, it's just an opportunity to just put something out there into the ether. I'm never gonna meet any of you, so I have no idea. I don't have to face the wrath of all the people who'll hate what I'm about to say. I thought Halloween was terrible. I'm sorry. I thought it was boring. It's what? It's like you're putting knives into our chest. You knives out. Like, to face the wrath of the people watching this, but me, Scott Tilton. JB's little face is very, very sad. No, I watched, obviously watched Halloween because everyone talks about it. It's a big old deal. And it was before the remake was coming out. So I thought I'll go back. I'll just see what's going on with Mr. Michael Myers. And he doesn't do anything, does he? He just sort of walks around and he sort of looks at people and the music's really cheesy. I like, I like the score. I love John Carpenter. I like the piece of music, but the way that it's used, where it just kind of goes like, 
like in the middle. And I'm just like, what? Oh, oh, is that, am I scared now? Like, what am I, what is that supposed to be? It's extremely cheesy filmmaking. And obviously it was more in vogue at the time, but I don't think it's as effective as, you know, as old school horrors, the likes of Alien or The Thing or whatever. Like I know they came after, but in terms of Halloween, I just, I never felt the threat whatsoever because they think, and maybe this works for people, that a slow moving man who doesn't do anything is by definition scary. And I don't think so because he's so easy to put down. Just shoot him. Just shoot him. They're the same in the same movie. The bit in the new one, sorry. There's a bit where he's just walking towards main woman. I forget what she's called, and she just doesn't shoot him. She w runs away. Just shoot him. He's just standing there. And I never thought that they did a very good job of getting across why he's supposed to be terrifying, other than everyone referring to him as the thing or whatever it is, the thing that moves or something. The shape. The shape. What the shape? It's just a bloke. Like it's just a dude. And I just I I can't get away with it. And I I, I know that my qualm is more conceptual, but even in the movie itself, I never got why it was so immaculately well regarded, other than the piece of music is phenomenal and that's about it most like there's some really cool shots where he's in the distance but most of the kills are unmemorable other than the one where he spikes the guy against the wardrobe and i just never in the fear was never there if even if you go back to the original alien you can see why it took off so much and i don't know whether the original halloween was just it came out on halloween and it was a big old deal and people wanted like a slasher flick and it was one of the first of its kind but i if you go back to it now i'm sorry i didn't think it had aged very well at all